All right, so this will be my video on the continuum hypothesis, and um, basically, I said in my last video that I'm going to show you why the naturals have the same amount of uh, elements as the integers, and you know that's weird, but that's what that's what's going on. So basically, um, so before I get into that, um, here I've written an important uh, concept that we need to have down before I go forward. This is if you're not familiar with this notation, this means that a function f, you know, takes x and it maps it to y. Um, you know, it's really just, think of it as like, you know, y plus x squared, you know, from here, this is your x, and this is your y, you know, this is your uh, domain, that's your range, and um, you have, you know, 1, uh, 1 squared is 1, you know, 2 squared is 4, so on and so forth, you know, function x maps to y, and that's really, you know, what this is. And so, keeping that in mind, now how does that business apply to infinite sets? Um, basically, here, you know, the natural is like, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, you know, all dot, 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 and here, you know, in, integers, you know, dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 all the way down. Now, the reason why they're equal is, be or I shouldn't say equal, I should say they have the same size. The reason why the sets have the same size is because two sets only have the same size if there's a bijection between them, which means that you can map exactly, you can really take this element and map it to one element over here. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship. For each number, each x you give me, I can give you a y. And so that's a bijection or one-to-one -one relationship. And because and two sets are only equal if or equal, or equal if and only if there's a bijection between the two elements. And for the naturals and the integers, there is a bijection. Here's why: because you can start with zero, and any integer you give me, no matter you know what integer it is, I can take zero and you know um, say that th this you know maps maps over to whatever integer you give me, and I can you know repeat that for one and um, negative one and zero. Now. Were, if, if you took a subset of the naturals and a subset of integers, like if I had like, you know, let's just say I took a subset of n here, like, you know, 1, 2, 3, that would be a subset, and here I took all these elements. Clearly, this subset is smaller than that one. That's because it's finite, and I cannot, I cannot make a 1 to 1 relationship between 1, 2, 3, and 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Because it's infinite, I can keep going. I can go on and on and on, and I'll never run out of elements to, to map here. And a very important concept is because the reason why we can do that is because every single element we know where the next one is. We know that you know negative three, the next one's gonna be negative two, the next one's gonna be negative one. We know exactly what the next element is, and because of that, we can map uh, from one set to the other. And because we can map, because there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the two of them, that's why they have the same size. Now, how does this apply to the real numbers? Um, basically, there's a mathematician in the last century, twentieth, tw I think twentieth. <coughs> 20th or late 19th, uh, Gay or Cantor, and basically he was kind of the first one who studied infinite sets and cardinal and all that stuff, and basically he kind of spent like some a lot of years in his later life trying to prove the continuum hypothesis, and actually it, the continuum hypothesis actually cannot be proven, um, true or false, and that is a concept which I, another concept which I'll revisit later when I talk about the zermelo frank kell axioms. But basically, um, he kind of went—he kind of went nuts uh, trying to prove it, and he couldn't prove it. And I think he actually killed himself. That was that—that's an interesting story. But anyways, so uh, the real numbers um, is the reason, and the real numbers have a different cardinality than the natural integers. They actually have what's called an uncountably infinite amount of elements. And why is that? Because for the real number, let's say I start with zero, right? And we don't know what the next element is, and because I can just do 0 0.01, I can do 0 0.01, I can do 0 0.00000001, and go on indefinitely. And because we don't know where the next element is, because the next element goes on and on and on, we don't we don't really have a way to we can't so we can't strictly specify what the element is, and and because of that, we cannot map the naturals uh, we cannot map the naturals or the integers uh, to the reals and have a one to one relationship. We just don't know. Uh, what that is, and keep, and this is what's really interesting is that the spacing between each real number is uh, like you know, but the, the the amount of like if we had zero and one, and we wanted to know, and let's say you know the amount of reals between zero and one is actually m uh, more than the entire set of natural integers, which I think is a really counterintuitive thing. And we study set theory long enough. Uh, that's really kind of uh, that's kind of a weird weird concept, and maybe I probably should have done this video maybe towards the end of the set theory playlist. But really, um, the the stuff I talked about earlier is enough to kind of uh, understand this. But basically, so this is like that's a really weird thing to think about because like you know this is why it's uncountably infinite because we just don't know where the next uh, element in the set is to be to really, that's really why we don't know. And so Gerard Cantor, uh, his hypothesis is that there is a, a, a there is actually no set. 
that has a cardinality between the naturals and the reals, which means that it's either natural, well, the size of the set is either the size of the naturals or it's the size of the reals, and there's nothing in between them. There's no uh, size that exists between them. And that's, you know, can be written like this, you know, all if not, which is the cardinality of the naturals. Um, there's no set that's, you know, greater than that, but less than the reals. That, and this little upside down T means false. And so, uh, basically, that is the consent hypothesis. This actually can be generalized um, uh, kind of more. That, um, that, you know, really, all, actually, before I even get into that, I should say that, um, all of one is, you know, the, the, there's a couple ways to write that. You can write, you know, C, which means cardinality continuum. I can also write this as, you know, two to the all if not. Um, and really, this is like the idea that the real is the power set to the naturals. And, um, and so, basically, you know, it, with another interesting property, or not really property, but kind of idea from the, that stems from the consent hypothesis is that you can have, that if you had like a higher cardinality, like if you wanted to take the power set of the reals, that would be equal to all of two. Which is the next uncountable, uncountably infinite cardinal. That's the term. Cardinals are basically like you know all of all of not all of one, so on and so forth. Um, they're kind of like degrees of infinity. Because basically, when people say infinity, um, well, the lay people say infinity, they don't really, uh, I, they do not specify that they're actually. They don't really know that there are different levels of infinity. Infinity. When you say infinity, that can mean several different things. As I just kind of you know been going on and on about. So basically. Uh, that the, the power set of the reals is cardinality in all of two, and there's actually there's no cardinality that exists between all of one and all of two, and um, and so you've got all of three, which would be like you know all of three would be the power set of the power set of the reals. That's and that, and and actually before I even like go any further, that's a really weird thing to think about because what exactly would the power set of the reals be, and what exactly would the power set of the power set of the reals be like? You know the amount of elements in that set uh, are just it's it, it's greater, but you know like, what will those numbers really be like? That's an interesting thing to think about, and I really like it's it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to really understand what that really means. And basically, that's kind of what the consent hypothesis is all saying. This is like the more I think this this is called a generalized version. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's like the prop. I don't think that that's really exactly what it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've like looked at that, but basically, um, the, 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 the idea is the same. What I'm saying here is still true. That the, that the idea is that the cardinalities, there's all of two, all of three. That's the next cardinal. There's nothing in between any of these cardinals. Uh, any set you can come up with, they either have this cardinality or that cardinality. Nothing like you know uh, all of two point five. Nothing like that. And so, um, basically, and you can kind of like you, of course, you know, whenever you write all of, you can also write Beth. That's just an all, or you know, which is like this letter. Which is an alternative, and basically in general, like you know, when you have a uh, a cardinal aleph uh, a uh, plus one, that's just equal to uh, the power set of the previous uh, cardinal. Always, that's always the case, um, and and so when it, that that's that's the kind of idea. And also, now here's where it's really interesting because what if what if this a down here? What if the what if this uh, index here is actually like this? What if it's like this? You have all f, and then you have, uh, I guess, um, I guess all f not. Uh, so basically, that means that you have a countably infinite amount of uh, cardinals here. So you basically, like, you know, you have, you basically take a, uh, let's just say we take another set. Um, actually, I won't even like get into that. Basically, the idea here is you can keep adding, 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 and eventually uh, there's a point where, uh, well, shouldn't say, I shouldn't say that, but basically th there, there is a, there is a. Um, it is well defined. It is the it is the fine set theory that you can have a countably infinite amount of cardinals, and that gets into like you know uh, you know ordinals and uh, you know there's actually like a whole system of uh, arithmetic and like you know uh, multiplication all that stuff that um is uh, that is that's being that's being studied right now. Uh, basically, it's kind of like you know what I have to call the search for the highest infinity. Like you know what exactly how high can we go? That's kind of any research that's done in the consent hypothesis now, I think, is kind of based on that. Like, how high can we go? And so this is kind of like, you know, uh, where that kind of idea steps from. What, what would be the highest possible cardinal ordinal that we can possibly construct and, um, you know, uh, and it still be still makes sense? Like, what, does it make mathematical sense? Like, these make mathematical sense. They're well defined. They're defined. You know, this is the power set. That's what it equals to. What's the highest ordinal that we can, or cardinal, cardinal we can construct that will have the, um, that can be well defined? And that's really what the consent hypothesis is really all saying. And so in the next video, I will be doing, um, I'll start talking about the uh, zermelo frankel uh, um, axioms and kind of what those are all about. And, and then in a couple of videos, I'll be talking about why it's actually not possible 
to prove whether the consent process is true or not. Like it, it's it's it might be true, it might be false, but we, uh, given our current understanding of set theory, we we do not we don't have a way of proving or disproving it at, at, as of 2014. Uh, so anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.